We tried to be organized, but you know. <laughs> it's like herding cats, what can I say? <laughs> no, they're adorable, but you know, we, um, we're the old guard. We've been around a long time. We were all at that retreat, and it was 2003, if you couldn't see it from the back. But um, I, I'm sure most of you know, some of you may not, but Kay passed away a few weeks ago. And um, so we're going to take this evening and just share some things that we learned from her, some things that hopefully will be an encouragement to you, some area that she ministered into our life, and um, she was such a rich blessing. This group up here was there in the very beginning, and um, so it's, I'm not going to tell you how many years ago, but it's, it's been a while. <laughs> and um, it's been a joy to serve with them all these years. And it was a joy for us to serve with Kay. We were kids when we started. We were in our 20s. Um, early on, we were just, why did she even pick us to do it? But you know what? She took a chance, and she just loved us. And we began to fall in love with her because she cared. And the thing was, she wanted, she wanted us to serve the Lord in the best way we could. And she challenged us to that. And so that's why, you know, we, we, she was like a mom to us. And she would tell us where we made mistakes, and she would encourage us to go on. And some of you are going to hear that tonight. Um, so I will let them share those things. She started a Bible study at my house in the very beginning. I lived across the street from Calvary Chapel in Costa Mesa. And I said, come to my house and do a study. And um, she said, I don't know, I, I don't really have time. And it really, she hadn't taught much at all. And so she had been attending a home prayer meeting near her house for years at Calvary, the few years that they'd already been there. This was about 1971 or two. And so I just said, could you do it every other week? And she said, well, ask Chuck. So I just prayed. I said, pray about it, Kay. Because we were just hungry. We wanted to know something from an older woman. And she loved the Lord, and we just wanted that. So she said that she asked the Lord, and he said that the older women were to teach the younger, but she was not old. <laughs> <laughs> she was simply older than we were, because she was 40. So... <laughs> When she started out, this is what she did, and this is what is so great, and I just want to leave you with these thoughts. She went into Proverbs 14, 1, and it's always been one of my favorite at couples retreats. A wise woman builds her house, and the foolish tear it down with her hands. And she really went into depth on that, and she taught us how to be moms, how to be wives, always told us to love our husbands and love our children, and she'd say things like, when you pick up your children's shoes, pray for them. And then... She would tell us about what not to do, and it says the foolish woman tears down her house with her hands, and she would say, don't ever go into a group of women and start talking against your husband. Don't ever do that. And I just remembered that all my life, and I, and I just thought, what a wonderful thing to say, because you can get into a group that's doing that, and you join, then you go home, and you, you're so mad at your husband, he has no idea what he did. <laughs> She just gave us a lot of wisdom. She loved prayer. She loved the word. You're going to hear about that tonight. And she loved the gifts of the spirit. And she taught us about that. And I'm telling you, in that Jesus movement, and in those years, the filling of the Holy Spirit was everything. And it made all the difference in that revival. Well, there got to be 70 ladies at my house. And I got a call from the city, and they booted us out. They said, you can't meet. Whatever you're doing in your house, we don't know. But the trash trucks can't pick up the trash. So... <laughs> Get it out of your house, whatever you're doing. Well, you know, some of those things that seemed difficult were from the Lord because it moved across the street to Calvary Chapel and exploded. And through the years, thousands of women have gone through the Joyful Life study with Kay. If they weren't there personally, they often in your churches took the homework home and did that. And so um, that was God's plan. I want to share one other thing about her. It was really sweet. She was shy. I don't know if you knew that about her, because she, she just looks so bubbly and fun, doesn't she? She was lots of fun. We did a lot of laughing along with a lot of deep praying. But she was shy, and I think that's why she hesitated to teach probably at my house a bit. But she got so she loved it, and she did well. 
Years later, at Pastor's Wife, she was struggling over her messages, worried about them. You know how you do when you're teaching Bible study. And she goes, Jean, I don't know, whatever. And I finally went to her and I said, Okay, I'm going to tell you something. You don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to be Chuck. Just be our mom. Just tell us how to live. Tell us about Jesus. Tell us what you know, because we want to know what you know. And she smiled and said, I can do that. And that's what she did. And she didn't struggle after that. Well, now we're going to hear from Sandy, who was also there at the beginning. Of that group, Jean was probably the most qualified. She was a churchgoer. She was a good girl. She, you know. The rest of us, probably by looking at us, you'll know what we were, what we were like. Um, and as I said this afternoon, I thought, what, what am I doing here? I was so nervous that first meeting. Janie Alford wasn't, isn't here tonight, but she was at the first meeting. I poured coffee all over her. That's what a wreck I was. Um, I was just thinking as Jean was talking that um, one of the things that Kay um, shared, and I don't know if she shared with this with the whole group or if she shared it at a Bible study, if she just shared it with me. But she said, use everything that you're doing in your home that is practical, that has to get done as a prompt to prayer. She said, when you're picking up your husband's socks that never end up in the laundry and always end up on the floor, <laughs> pray for him that his feet will be shod with the beauty of the gospel and he'll go forth and tell everyone. As you're cleaning up the dishes and putting them away, pray for your children that they would be washed clean by the blood of the, blood of the lamb. As you're doing the laundry and folding and pulling the warm clothes out of the dryer, pray that the heat of the Holy Spirit would fill your home and fill your husband. And, and I did that for years. She also, because I, cause I was just too busy. I thought I was too busy to pray. You're, and she even said once, when you're in your car and you turn on your turn signal and it goes, she said, you know what I do? I go, Praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you, praise you. Little practical things that really helped me. But one of the things I love the most about Kay is that she just, Jean said she had supernatural gifts, and she did, and she just knew things. She knew things about us that we didn't even know about ourselves. She knew things about us that we didn't even want her to know. She knew, she did, she knew what our gifts were, she knew where, what our weaknesses were, and she encouraged us in our gifts and corrected us in our weaknesses. She could pray the shingles off a roof. I've never heard anybody pray like I heard Kay pray at that first meeting. I didn't even want to pray. In fact, we used to go around the room, and we used to ding, 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 pray. And then I didn't know what to pray, so we'd get done, and then she'd look up at me, and she'd go, Sandy, I think you failed to pray. So we will start again. Um, and as Jean says, she was, she was wonderfully silly. She, she would just had a silly side that, um, and you could just see that kind of in, in listening to her, how wonderfully silly and funny she could be. I never have gotten over the fact that I was privileged to be invited to that meeting. I sat in those first meetings at Jean's house before Mike and I moved to San Diego and sat at her feet and learned from her. I can't believe I got to do that. I can't believe I got to be in a board with her. I can't believe I learned from her. And, and that she talked to me and that we were friends. I can't believe that I got to travel with her. She literally changed my life, changed my life, changed my feeling about my husband and my feeling about the ministry. <clears throat> but back to the things that she knew, she just knew things. And one of the things that she knew is that she knew that somehow, supernaturally, God was going to take this little group of pastor's wives and this little idea of having a pastor's wives retreat, and it was going to explode. She knew about you even if you never knew her. She knew that you would need this, and she somehow knew that we would all be here tonight, that you are only sitting here tonight whether you knew her or not because of Kay Smith. This was her vision for you. This was her love for you. This was her care from you. And now we're going to hear, because not only from the board, but we've got some girls we've asked to sit in the front row. And so that you can see this wasn't just this board. These are girls that knew Kay well. Some of them never knew her at all, but whose Kay's life and Kay's ministry had a profound effect upon them. So Jean's going to call them up one by one. Hi, my name is Inga Guzik, but I'm going to read to you something from Janie Alfred because she couldn't be here tonight. This is what Janie says. 
I can never think of a time that I heard Kay speak that I wasn't encouraged to go deeper in my relationship with Jesus. She was such an example of a woman who loved God, prayed fervently, and wanted his best for all of us. The last time I talked to Kay was right after my daughter was killed. Kay was already experiencing the effects of dementia, so I was surprised when she came to see me and Karen Pulley. Right away, Kay asked me about Ashley. She cried with me and offered God's comfort in the words that she spoke. It showed me that God can use us in spite of what is going on physically and even mentally. She truly deserved the words of Jesus in Matthew 25. Well done, good and faithful servant. This is Marie. She's going to introduce herself, so you just tell them where you're from and tell the audience. And I'm Marie Rosales, and I'm from Chino Hills, or Chino? Born in Chino, live in Chino. <laughs> sharing a little bit about Kay. And I want to, one of the things, one of the first things that I learned from Kay that impressed me and helped me to form and develop my heart for, for, for ministry was her compassion. First of all, we all know that it was Kay who cried for the lost hippies at the beach, and it was Kay who prayed for them to be saved. She had a great influence on Pastor Chuck, and God used her compassion for those lost children to be welcomed into the church, and many got saved. Some even went, went on to become ministers of the gospel of Jesus, including my future husband, who gave his heart to the Lord um, during that time and received his, his early grounding at Calvary Chapel. A second thing is that I learned from Kay from K was priority and the importance of loving my husband and children. It wasn't unusual for Kay when speaking of Chuck to call him Pastor Chuck, and this taught me to respect my husband as my pastor. She also taught me that raising my children was my first ministry, and this is why I waited to begin our women's ministry. Kay was faithful to her calling and ministry. She loved all hymns because they were, the, they were centered on Jesus and, she, and was very personable. She was always interested in others and enjoyed, enjoyed, her, enjoyed her calling alongside her Chuck. She encouraged us young women and was not only a mother to us, but also a sister in Christ who was faithful to our Lord. Finally, the thing that I will always be most impressed with was her deep love for Jesus. Kay was a Jesus freak a lo long before hippies became known as Jesus freaks. It was, it was her love for God and his work that will always be the most important thing that I learned from her. In the book of Titus, chapter 2, verses 3 through 5, Paul told the, old, told the older women to urge the younger women to love their husbands and children and to be self-controlled and pure, to be busy at home, to be kind, to be subject to their husbands, that no one will malign the word of God. By her life, Kay taught me this, and I will always be thankful for her. There will never be another Kay Smith, but by God's grace, perhaps we can become a Kay Smith for other women. God bless you all. Kathy. Kathy's going to introduce herself, but um, she did the editing with Kay, writing the homework for Joyful Life for years. So. Hi, I'm Kathy Dickinson. I, my husband is a pastor at Calvary Chapel Jericho Road down in the San Diego area. And I think I had the privilege of sitting under Kay's teaching at Joyful Life longer than any other pastor's wife. And I am definitely the better for it. I shared at Golden Springs Memorial, and so I was kind of wanting to know what I should share tonight. And I felt like I wanted to just share with you words from Kay from her book, Pleasing God. So 
These are Kay's words to us. There's a better way to live. We can live to please God. John 6, 38, Jesus said, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. There's the key. Rather than seeking your own will, set it aside in order to do the will of the Father. To please someone means to delight, to satisfy, to gratify. When our aim is to please God, then we will begin to weigh all our actions in light of whether or not those actions are pleasing to him. One of the best things about living this way, and one of the reasons I think this message is so important for women today, is that it simplifies the Christian life. Put just one thing on your list, Lord, I want to please you. Then it's not complicated at all. Because God wants you to live a life that is pleasing to him, he will give you the power of the Holy Spirit to live to please him. Tell God you want to please him. Tell him you want the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Ask God to break your heart with anything that breaks his heart, and then watch how your desires begin to change. If you do not seem able to walk the victorious life in Christ, don't blame him. He is not deficient in power. Some place along the line, you are making provision for your flesh. When you hurt, love back. I personally believe that every single crisis I've gone through could have been used for my growth had I allowed it to, every one of them. Jesus said of Mary of Bethany, she has done a good thing for me. I would like that to be said about me concerning my Lord, wouldn't you? I believe that if we thought more about the suffering of Christ, we could not sin so easily. Remember this, fulfillment never comes through pleasing yourself. It comes through walking with Jesus and living to please him. It comes through sacrifice. Kay Smith lived that. That was what is important for her that we girls carry on. This is Debbie Bryson. I'm sure a lot of you know her. I feel so tall. <laughs> anyway, Debbie's been there for many, many years and ministered in a lot of the Calvary. Thank you. Well, um, I came from um, the 60s, and um, the, I was one of those kids that was at the beaches when Chuck was drugged there by Kay to pray for them. And um, in the last few years, she lived in Oceanside. I live in Oceanside. And sometimes I would call um, her daughter, Jan, and say, can I do a shift? And um, so I would be there with her, and we'd look at old pictures, and we would watch Kay on TV, and we'd smile at each other and, and um, eat chocolate sometimes. And, um, but about 10 days before she passed, I felt this prompting, just in, uh, compelling, um, to call and ask for a shift. And so I went, and Jan was there the whole time, and we talked for five straight hours about all the miraculous things that uh, God did. You know, and my life is, is testimony to that. And so many of you have a story of, like, how did God save me? And, and uh, I just feel so, like, amazing. It's lucky us that we lived in this generation under such uh, powerful examples. And after five hours, then um, I, I, before I left, I said, could I just talk to Kay for just a minute? And by then, she was sleeping the whole time, the whole five hours in the room. We were just, you know, a foot away from her bed. And I just picked up her hand, and she had been sound asleep. And I said, Kay, I just have to tell you, thank you for going to the beach and praying for me. Thank you. I know I was there when you prayed. Thank you for teaching me how to know God and to love God. And thank you for being a good sorter. Anybody that knew Kay, she had the gift of exhortation. It was kind of like a kick and a hug, you know, <laughs> when you were told. You were told. You were told. But you know what? Um, I was a blank slate. 
I had no idea how to serve God. And she didn't, she didn't waste a minute. Uh, you must listen to the Pleasing God series. Um, I just listened to the one Walking with God, and that's the whole gig. That's her story. Uh, she never viewed herself as a famous person. Um, she knew who was famous in her book. And she taught me how to walk it out. So um, she was our dear Mama Kay. We wanted you to see from all walks with, you know, that Kay touched lives. But next is Michelle Randall, and um, she will introduce and where she's from. But it's fun because she was, what is it, first grade? School teacher at oh, Maranatha yeah. at Calvary. Yeah. 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 There you yeah. go. I was a fifth grade teacher at MCA, and I have the privilege of um, watching all the women, hundreds and hundreds of women come every Friday. <laughs> And um, to see, and I just couldn't wait to sit under Kay's teaching. Um, well, I'm Michelle Randall from Calvary Chapel, San Juan Capistrano. My husband's John Randall. I do have a little something prepared. Um, I was, quickly became a pastor's wife um, after I was a school teacher. And as a young pastor's wife, sitting underneath Kay's teaching, which I did get to do uh, with a baby in hand, um, I watched her carefully and I admired many of her godly qualities, her uncanny ability to deliver a rebuke wrapped in a bow, but I like the kick and hug. I've never heard that. That's the same thing. Her genuine love and care for her women, her high standards that she set for herself and her leadership. Um, but of all of the qualities that I could recount about Kay, the one that made the biggest impact on me was revealed when I had the opportunity to sit with her in person about seven years ago. She uh, didn't know who I was, asked me five times while sitting there with her, who are you again? She couldn't remember who I was. However, I learned something very valuable that day, that scripture is not hidden in our mind, it's hidden in our heart. She recounted scripture after scripture after scripture, and I thought to myself when I left Kay that day, I wonder if I've hidden enough scripture in my heart that if my mind was to go, that I could recount it like Kay. <laughs> so I wrote down um, 13 um, words of wisdom for you ladies, and we made a bookmark of it. So on the front and back, you can keep this with you and just read it over and over again. These are things that touched me that I learned not just from Kay, but all of these ladies. I interviewed them each and asked them to send me something that touched them about Kay, and um, it's on this bookmark here for you. Thank you, Michelle. That was so sweet. When we asked her to do it, she just got on it really quick, even tried to match the colors. So <laughs> just a good reminder to keep in your Bible. Next we have um, Yanni. Come on up, as you'll be able, if you don't know her, she um, came from Cuba. And we're so glad to get her in. She's one of our newer pastor's wives, and yeah, I watched her grow incredibly. Oh. So, yes, my name is Johnny Hint, and I am from uh, Calvary, Houston, from uh, Texas. I live in another whole country over there. <laughs> so I never had the privilege to make Kay, but I was given to me the privilege to read this book. And uh, when I first uh, married my husband, Ron, and I became a pastor's wife, I have my Bible and this book with me. I read it so many times that I actually ask if I can get it in Spanish because it's my first language. And it is in Spanish, so I got the Spanish book, and I read it so many times too. And then I brought it to Cuba, to our precious pastor's wife in Cuba. We had 30 Calvary chapels, and they, um, they loved the book, The Privilege in Spanish, but also uh, we had done with our ladies, pleasing God, reflecting God, and it's been such a blessing. We just finished last summer, uh, the pleasing God, and uh, I brought that book to Cuba too because that book is in Spanish, and not only has been a blessing for the Calvary and the women ministry and the Calvary in Cuba, but also many other denominations. Kay Smith book is everywhere in Cuba. Many churches, many Calvary uh, and also all the denomination. And I thank the Lord so much. I always tell my husband, Miss Kay Smith, I never met her, but she's, was, she's my mentor. <laughs> she not even knew that. 
that she was my mentor along with these precious ladies. There has been such a blessing to my life. And I just love Kay and her teaching. And I just, um, I, I love and love and love that God has used her in so many ways to teach the word of God. I want to be like her. Like Paul say, I want to reflect, reflect, you know, I want to reflect Christ, imitate me. How I imitate Christ, I want to imitate Kay Smith like she did imitate Christ. And I just want to read um, a little bit about this. Um, please, see, uh, I'm sorry, the, the privilege. And it's one thing that I read in this book many times, and it has stuck in my heart. And it, I, I feel like Kay is talking to me when I, I, I remember these words. And this is what she say. I have said many times that if it were to uh, write a book for Pastor's Wife, I would tell you to do the following. Love the Lord, love your husband, love your children, and love the people. As a Pastor's Wife, that's our example. And Ms. Kay is giving us um, that example to follow, and we are so blessed. We are so blessed to, to be able to... Um, know her, the, the, some pastors why here, they're brand new pastors why, and if you never read this book, you need to get this book as soon as possible, because it's amazing, and you're going to be so blessed, and you're going to go back to this book so many times. Take it with you everywhere you go, because you're going to need it. Thank you so much. And you all know Terry, because this is her home right here. <laughs> Well, hello, ladies, again. Um, so I had the privilege of sitting under Kay's teaching for over 25 years, going to Pastor's Wives Retreat, back when my, my husband was a youth pastor at Calvary Chapel, Moreno Valley. And um, I think one of the first retreats we went to was up at Twin Peaks. And I just, wow, it was so, so exciting. But one of the things early in ministry that used to really bother me, even as a youth pastor, a pastor's wife, is that, um, I, you know, you love these people in your churches. You pour your lives in them, and then they leave. And I just, I mean, I just never could get used to it. It just broke my heart all the time. And, and I remember going to one of the retreats, and Kay got up there, and she said, ladies, I know it's hard when people, you pour your lives into people. You give them all the love, and then they leave. She says, but I want to tell you something. You smile when they leave, and you smile when they come back, because they will. And, you know, I've had the privilege recently of experiencing that with, a, with someone that said, can I come back? Because we love them. So love your people, even when it hurts. Just know that it's, you're, it's very common ground for all of us, you know, to do that. But one other thing about Kay that really always stood out to me is, is her gift of exhortation was so amazing. And one of the things that she used to say at Pastor's Wives Retreats was, how can you sit there when God has done so much for you? Stand up and begin to praise his holy name. <laughs> That's my case story. <laughs> she did, too. Well, this is Carol. She's going to tell you where she's from. But she was, when we left to go to Lake Arrowhead, she came. So she was way back there. Her husband on staff needed to leave. Yes. My name is Carol Wild, and my husband's name is Malcolm. Um, we came from England um, many, many years ago, 45 years ago, I think it was, but it was in the early 70s when we were in California, and I was a young pastor's wife with three young children, and I needed a spiritual mentor. <clears throat> I needed a woman of conviction filled with the Holy Spirit, and I was just one of hundreds of um, young women coming onto the church grounds in my tiny cut-off shorts <laughs> and my braless tube top. <laughs> and my husband was on staff. clueless <laughs> but sitting under Kay's teaching 
as just these women have said, was life-changing for me. Um, what I needed was a spiritual mom, and she became that to me, and a friend. She shared God's word um, in such practical ways like you've heard. Her example of a woman who lived a transparent life, that's she was. She was so transparent. And as an English woman, um, it was... I just couldn't believe anyone could be so transparent. And that taught me a huge lesson to be transparent. Uh, if that was the only thing Kay ever taught me, it was the best thing she ever taught me. And, um, and you know, she never pretended to be perfect. I, I couldn't believe that either. I mean, usually <laughs> some people, all they want you to see is their good side and, you know, the things that they're good at and their strength. She wasn't like that at all. She was so real and so transparent. Um, and her passion for Jesus, oh, it was compelling. You would sit there and I can remember thinking, I just, I want that Jesus. Jesus, I want to be like Kay. I want that passion that she has. And um, the Holy Spirit was always so evident um, upon her life when she would teach. Every Friday morning, it was the highlight of my life. I had never been to a women's Bible study until I went to um, California as a, young, as a young wife and mom. And I'd, I'd been a Christian maybe 10 years. And I had never, they just didn't have women's Bible studies. <clears throat> Kay became a friend, a friend that I needed. And she was older and she was wiser. And many times I would hear them at the Bible study say, see you on the tennis court, see you at lunch. And I'd walk home, I lived just across the street, and I'd say, Lord, I need a friend like that. And um, that was just my mantra, if you like. And one day I was walking home, back home and I'm saying the same thing, and the Lord spoke right into my heart and said, you do have a best friend. And I, I kept thinking, oh, I know it's you, Lord. And he said, no. It's Kay. She'll never know it, but she is your best friend. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> it was many years later I was able to tell her that she had been my best friend for years, <laughs> although she never knew it. So we spent, my husband was on staff for seven and a half years, and there were the most wonderful, they were, and he would tell you this too, they were the best years of my life just because of her. And when it was time for us to move to Florida, after seven and a half years, we went out for breakfast. And I looked at Kay and said, Kay, what do I do? I'm going to be the pastor's wife. I've been able to hide behind you and <laughs> for all these years. And now I'm going... And she looked at me and she said something very simple and yet very profound. She said, Carol, be yourself. And I remember thinking, hmm, I can do that. <laughs> I'll be forever grateful, ever grateful for Kay and what she taught me. Thanks, Carol. Now we're going to move back up to the, not old, but older group. <laughs> Gail. <laughs> Well, I have to introduce myself. Oh, you always forget to do that. Because everybody, when you go someplace, they always do such a wonderful introduction. So my name is Gail Mays, and um, on Saturday, I was married to Steve Mays, and Saturday was the seventh year of his passing. So he's been in heaven on earth time seven years, but in heaven it's probably a na nanosecond. <laughs> Somebody said that when we get there, and we're going to see our loved ones, it's going to be for them like a second. Like, there you are, you're finally with me. I, too, was at Kay's Bible study at Jean's house, and we were the hippie kids in the house ministries, the communes, the Christian houses, and we would be piled into these vans, and we were driven to Kay's Bible study. And I remember I sat on the floor because that's what the hippie kids did. We sat on the floor. On, Saturday, on Sunday nights when Chuck would teach the Bible studies, we sat on the floor. 
So that was very comfortable. And we were learning many, many things. Again, just um, she would emphasize that the wise woman builds, but a foolish woman tears down her house with her own hands. I can hear her in my head to this day. Oh, I don't want to be that. And she, came, she coined a, a, a phrase, and she said that, we would, that if we would be these wise women that built our homes, loved our husbands, loved our children, loved the people that God brings into our lives, that um, she wanted us to be wow women. And so being, you know, young, and I thought, I, I want to be a wow woman. And what she meant by that was that we would be women of the word. She taught us to love God's word and that this was the answer for all the problems that we would face. I, too, was invited to that meeting to help her um, plan these pastor's wives retreat. For me, I thought there's got to be some mistake. Steve, please call and, you know, get me out of this. I, that's Kay Smith. I, you know, and, but anyway, but, you know, you, you do what they tell you to do. So <laughs> I'm, I'm the least of the least. I'm with Pos the Apostle Paul. I am totally the least of the least. And I remember that first meeting, I sat on the floor. I was not sitting at the table, which, Kay Smith, you got to be kidding me. But it didn't take long with her loving arms and her acceptance of um, who we were uh, at the time that she, you know, said, come on, sit up at the table, we're just going to be friends. Uh, Kay had a unique way, an ability, to see in me a gifting, giftings, giftings that I didn't know I had. Now, I know that this may sound strange to some, but by nature, the way I was born, I'm an extreme introvert. My husband was the extrovert, so why did I have to do that? He did it all. And not only that, but I have a very shy personality. I think that's what connected me with Kay, because there was a shy part of her as well. And I was happy just to be the behind the scene kind of gal. I, you know, I don't have to be, you know, doing anything like super, super important, like these giant spiritual women that I was surrounded by, but just whatever I need to do. I found, I often thought how amazing it was that Kay saw in me a future public ministry. It was just something beyond my, I didn't want to sign up for it. I didn't want to put a resume in for it. But she saw something in me. And that was something that she encouraged me. A lot, and, you know, it took years, but she, she saw that. She saw that I had certain leadership abilities. Um, but little did I know that... I would need those abilities, those giftings, this public ministry as a senior pastor's wife. She not only recognized my potential, but she, in her gentle yet very firm way, would encourage me to try and try again. And I was doing the try, try, try again more than success. Because you know how you just feel like you just, you didn't communicate, you didn't, it didn't come off right. Whatever was in my notes, it, it, it like it faded away, like I didn't have any notes. I fell on my face more times than ever, but I could hear her in, in my head, try, try again. She challenged me to uh, understand, it was the word, she'd always take us to the word, and she would make May, to cause me to understand I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Over and over again, she would say, just yield. I don't know if you've ever heard any of her teachings or anything. Just yield, added by, it's like a breath of fresh air. And I thought to myself, well, how simple is that? Just yield. What are we yielding to? The work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That was the problem, you see, because I had what I thought I should be, and the Holy Spirit had another plan for me, but it was like this, you know, struggle that goes in. But I thought, how simple is that? That in that statement, all the pressure to perform, because it's like that I can't perform. I don't go, I didn't go to dramas. I remember my first speech in, in, in school, I bent the, I, I broke the, the pencil. I mean, I was, just, this is just not my calling, that kind of a thing, right? But um, in that statement, 
I realized that the pressure to perform had nothing to do with me. It was going to be a work of the Holy Spirit if he had the opportunity to freely flow through me. Kay to, to me was not only a friend, but a great role model. And what I learned through her and what she had the patience to continue to believe in me, in us actually, that she some way, somehow, like Sandy said, saw into the future because this isn't how we started. It took years to, um, to be encouraged and prompted and you know, hearing in, her, in my mind, try, try, try again. She was a great role model. She was a wonderful wife. She was a great pastor's wife. She was a mother. And it was, it was things that we could actually watch her and then apply those things to our lives. I thank Kay for pouring her life into mine. I am what I am today. Of course, the Lord Jesus Christ gets all the credit. But he used a woman that just had a heart for hippies, just a little converted hippie. She would say to me often, Gail, I think I saw you on the streets when I had such a burden. God, how can we reach these kids? They're so lost. And I said, Kay, it probably was. But because of her heart and because of her gift of prayer, which is another thing that she taught, and her patience to pour into us what she saw that we didn't see. And so I say thank you, Kay, for pouring into my life. Well, I dropped my notes, so let me put them in order. Do you mind? <laughs> okay, it's all been said, but um, Kay Smith, to me, had many roles. She was, when I first met her, the pastor's wife, and then she became my pastor's wife, and then she became a mentor, definitely a teacher. She became a friend, a trusted friend, because shared a lot of personal things with her, and then she became my sister in the Lord. She was always my sister in the Lord, but then we had that sister relationship. You've talked, we know that all of us were terrified when we were called, got that phone. I still have the little paper that my secretary gave and said they want you to go to Calvary Chapel Costa Mesa because I was working at House of Ruth at the time and it was like, well, why, why would they call me? I mean, I was seriously dealing with agoraphobia at the time. These girls were nervous. I was terrified. Um, Sharon didn't even remember. She sat on the floor. I think you slid down the wall. Um, <laughs> when I saw that, I thought, I don't have a chance. Uh, but, uh, but I remember that I went to the meetings very faithfully. I went. But for two and a half years, I said not one word in those meetings. I was afraid to say anything. I, I, know, I knew if I said anything that I'd say the wrong thing, but I didn't say anything because I was too afraid to say anything. But I loved being there, and I loved to hear Kay pray. And I never was late to the meetings because I always wanted to hear the prayers, hear her pray. And yes, we would go around the room, but I especially loved to hear Kay pray. And Sandy's right, she, she could pray the shingles off of the roof. Although I was afraid, I did pray. It was short, but I did, I did say something. I, was, I just had to say something because, well, when your eyes are closed, see, nobody's looking at you, so they weren't looking at me, so I wasn't afraid because they couldn't see me. And, but uh, Kay was always looking to drive us further on, to get us out of that shell, the fear that we were in. I, was she was never disappointed in us. She was never rude. She was never pushy. She just kept encouraging us and just wanting us to just keep moving forward. There were so many times she would say to me, Karen, is there just anything you could do at the pastor's wives retreat? Anything? <laughs> and I would just go, no, there's nothing. <laughs> I, there's, I, I can't do anything. And But one day, we were having a meeting, and these girls got stuck, really stuck, on 
the color of the tablecloths at the pastor's wives' retreat. And I sat there because I didn't, I didn't talk. But they go, well, should we get plastic or texture? Because they were all into material and things you know, different textures, and, and then, okay, then they decided on t plastic. <laughs> and then I guess like, okay, let's get blue. Okay, get blue. No, no, it was turquoise blue, royal blue, navy blue, <laughs> cobalt blue, sky blue, baby blue, robin's egg blue. <laughs> so in those days, we didn't have the internet, so somebody went and got the palette. <laughs> Remember the palettes, the color palettes? And, and I just thought, I'm, I'm gonna go crazy now. So, so I never said anything in these meetings, but that day I said, you guys, we've been stuck on this for 45 minutes. Please, just pick a color. And I think they thought that Frankenstein spoke. Like, oh my gosh, she spoke. <laughs> and so, uh, and Kay just goes, Karen, I don't think I've ever heard you say so many words in a row. <laughs> but after the meeting, after the meeting, she gave me her phone number. <laughs> and she said, Are you, would you be comfortable talking to me on the phone? And I said, you know, I think I would. <laughs> and um, so we call, and those long telephone calls she, Kate loved to talk, but she loved to listen. And she was so encouraging, and we always prayed. And she was always looking for gifts, always looking. And she was very direct with me, very direct with me about my fear. And she'd always say to me, Karen, you have such a focus on yourself. But she said it like, like you say with a bow, you know? <laughs> And, uh, and yes, she gave me scriptures, but she always encouraged us to step out, start something, start something that you're comfortable with. And this is what changed my life. This is what the phrase that changed my life. Karen, the needs of the ladies are greater than your fear. Don't you know, the the, don't you know that the needs of the ladies in your church are greater than your fear? That just killed me. That was the arrow in my heart, like, Wow, am I just some selfish person? And I just said, okay, so I'll try. And she gave me so many weird opportunities. I can't even get into them, but they were weird. <laughs> but I'll end with this. One day she said, you're going to teach at Twin Peaks this year. And I go, no. She said, you will. And I'm going to have my friend Mary Ladadio at the time. She goes, she's going to go in there and watch you. So if you faint or... <laughs> You know, she will be with you. And she sa I said, well, what am I going to teach on? She said, friendship in the ministry. Okay, so I prepared my study. It was 45 minutes with questions after. My study was done in 15 minutes. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> but Kay taught us that we weren't to have any, any, any excuses for any of this. She wouldn't let me have any excuses I can say that she had an influence on every one of us. It was very personal, it was unique, but most of all, what I miss about her is I miss hearing her pray. Because she had the most unique phrasing of words that she would use to describe her relationship with the Lord and what she wanted to hear. She gave me a word of knowledge one time in, in regard to my own daughter, worked at House of Ruth for years. My own daughter got pregnant. I, I thought I had completely failed. But she called and said, Karen, that daughter, this is before sonogram, she said, she's going to have a girl, and you're going to be closer to that granddaughter than you are to any of your other grandkids. And she gave me a scripture that God was going to make the cro crooked way straight. Everything she told me, I wrote it down, everything she said came to pass. She was a woman of vision. She was a woman of the word. She was prophetic in what she taught us. Amen. So I want to tell you how long it took us to figure out this artwork. <laughs> I won't. I promise I won't. <laughs> we did it and redid it and redid it. And what color? Oh, guy. Anyway, that's, that's it.
Do we want, do we want eyes? Do we want lips? Or what do we want? <laughs> Karen's right. She didn't exaggerate. Uh, <laughs> I didn't write any notes because I figured everybody would share everything and then... <laughs> But, um, okay, so here's the thoughts that I have. Okay, I have many, many, many thoughts, like we all do. Um, I, I wasn't a hippie. I didn't grow up going to her Bible studies. I grew up on the mission field, and my parents were missionaries. And then Raul got saved through Pastor Chuck, and he was out saving the whole world with all the hippies who were all saving the whole world. And I was just comfortable at home with my kids. I was just happy that Raul got saved. That's all I wanted out of the whole thing, is Raul, get saved. <laughs> I didn't want him to be a pastor evangelist, just get saved. And so then the day came when um, Raul says, Kay wants you to be on her board. And I, and I, I didn't know Kay, and I didn't really know Chuck. I, I knew all the hippie preachers, you know, with all the hair sticking out. We'd, we'd go to the tent, and, and I thought, ah on a board with a bunch of hippies, you know, it's like, I, I don't fit, I don't, it's not going to work for me. Ross says, you have to go. <laughs> so I was terrified, and I just found out tonight that I was sitting on the floor, and I really did slide down the wall. <laughs> <laughs> I was terrified, so I, I went to the, the board meeting, and, and uh, I grew up around a lot of godly people, because being a missionary, going to conferences, and and I specifically, my grandmother, who operated in a lot of the gifts of the Spirit, my mother, who also operated in the gifts of the Spirit. So I'd been around godly women. And so I went in there, and I really realized immediately, being there just a couple minutes, okay, that she was another one of those godly women. And I thought, oh, no, I'm in so much trouble now. I got away from my grandmother and my mother, and now here's Kay. <laughs> and I could tell, because being around godly people, um, that operated in the gifts of the Spirit, that she operated in the gifts of the Spirit. And I thought, she's going to know everything about me. And I just sat there quietly like the rest of us. We didn't talk. We just sat there and listened to Kay. It was just amazing. So um, fast forward, we were at a retreat at Twin Peaks, one of the first retreats. And uh, I thought, I need to talk to her, because I always felt insecure, like she could read right through me. I had gotten pregnant before I got married. And Raul was still aggressive. He was saved. He loved the Lord. But he, was, he grew up in a, in a family where they just yelled and fought all the time. So he was still being aggressive. And I thought, I need some counseling. I, need, I wasn't a person that wanted counseling. But I thought, I need for her to know that Raul and I are still having problems. And he's saving the world. And we're having problems. And I don't feel right. And I'm on your board. And so, so I wanted to talk to her. And so when, I, when she arrived at the, at the retreat, I said, you know, Kay, I was all fearful. Can we talk? And she says, oh, sure, later. You know, and so I approached her a couple times during the retreat. Can we talk at, at later? Well, at the end, it, it was over. And I followed her to her room, and she was walking out with her suitcase. And I go, Kay, can we talk? And she says, oh, yes, what? With her suitcase. And I said, well, Ron and I are still having problems. And she goes, well, are you going to leave him? I go, no. Uh, are, you gonna, are you sure you're not going to leave him? I go, no, I'm not going to leave him. Are you going to wait for him to mature in the Lord? Yes. Then you're fine. And she took off with her suitcase. <laughs> that was it. That was that. And I thought, yeah, that's the way it is. So I'm not going to leave him. <laughs> He's going to grow in the Lord. And I'm just going to be on her board. <laughs> so then fast forward. And we had a tea. Because, you know, women were having teas. And... I'd never really been involved in a women's ministry, but we had a tea, and Kay was our guest speaker. And we had about eight people sitting at a table, and Kay was right in front of me. And you know, I was always terrified of her, because I knew she was looking right through me. So with those little beady uh, blue eyes. So she was sitting across the table. I have a picture of this. We're both sitting together, smiling, like everything's fine, but it wasn't fine. <laughs> so Kay was there, and I was just sitting here thinking, this is ridiculous. Look at all these women. And I didn't want Raul to be a pastor or a minister, and I didn't want to be a pastor's wife. And here I am, leading this women's ministry, and here's Kay Smith, the godly woman that I was trying to get away from. <laughs> and she's just looking at me and looking at me. And all of a sudden, she just says, are you thinking of leaving him? <laughs> and I look around, and there's other women at the table. <laughs> and I, I said, 
No, not at all. <laughs> and she looked at me, and I knew. I go, she knows. So I was condemned. I don't know what she talking about that day, but I was condemned the whole time, thinking, oh, no, she knows I lied because my grandma knew everything, my mom knew everything, and this woman knows everything. And so I went home, and I thought, I have to call her. I can't live this hypocrisy. I have to tell her that I lied. So I called her up. I got the phone from Raul because I had never talked to her before, but he had Chuck's number. And I said, Kay, this is Sharon. She goes, I know you lied to me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, I am so sorry. There were people at the table. They weren't watching. <laughs> I mean, she, she was watching. She waited for that time to interrupt my thoughts. And I said, well, I just, you know, I, we, we just talked a bit, but that, that was that. So now I'm going to fast forward, <laughs> really fast forward. And um, I always knew... Well, in the, in the board meetings, I, I would write just entire sentences of what she was saying because I knew that she had all, she operated in all these gifts. She would give word of knowledge. She would, she would just speak in, in the spirit. She would uh, prophesy uh, when we were praying. She would say things, and I knew they were all coming from the spirit of God. And I have a lot of books that, and papers that I would take, and I would just write everything she said. And then with time, there was things she would say, and I'd say, you know, that can't be, and then I would see it come to pass. Just, yeah, and even in her teachings, you know, and so I was just always writing, 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 because I knew she was a woman of God. Well, there came a time when, <clears throat> it was around the year 97, that we had a person who was tormenting Raul and me. Uh, just, we didn't know who it was, but they would send evil letters about me, and if I'd go speak somewhere, and some of you might be here that received the letters from her. Uh, she would write letters that I was speaking against my husband, not to let me speak. Uh, even went to Costa Mesa and took, um, well, and there, then I think there were CDs or tapes uh, where, that I was speaking against my husband. They needed to hear these tapes. And, and we didn't know who this person was. We just did not know. So I called Kay, and she said, Sharon, I've had a lot of weird stuff, but this is the weirdest thing I've ever heard of. I mean, things would happen that were just demonic. They couldn't, I got run off the road a few times. I went on the freeway going the wrong way one time because I was running from somebody that was chasing me. And I called Kay, and she said, I want you to pull over. I said, but I'm going on an off-ramp. She goes, just pull over. And she prayed. And she goes, okay, now look around. Now turn around and go out. And she, she was guiding me for about three years. And she would call me in the morning, and she would say, is Raul there? No. Chuck's leaving in a minute. I'll call you back when Raul's gone. <laughs> Real intense. And she just, I wanted to use the contrast of in the beginning, and now she would take time to pray, to seek, to find out how, where are these letters coming from? Well, from New York, from Washington, everywhere I'm going to speak, these letters are coming. How did those letters get there and get sent to Raul that I was speaking against my husband? And um, one day she calls and she says, I know exactly who it is. And I thought, she does. She knows everything. <laughs> she said, it's somebody that's with you a lot. And I thought, well, I work with all these godly women, but there was this one volunteer that was always helping me. And I love, if you work with me, you know, if somebody says, hey, can I carry that? Sure. Can I help you with that? Sure. So a lot of people helped me, and I, I knew who it was that day. And it, it was just amazing how... I just have thought, what if in the beginning I was said, well, thanks a lot, I wanted to counsel with you, and all you said was two words and walked away. But my mother always said, you know what, this woman has been in ministry all her life. Listen to her, do what she says, and don't doubt her. And that's who, that's, that's who Kay was. She was just amazing. So now I'm going to share a real tender moment that I had. I've never, ever shared this before, but I was praying, and I thought... We all know that she was a woman of God that was connected to the Spirit of God. So uh, Raul, she was getting elderly, and she could still converse with you and talk with you, and she could sit up, she could walk a little bit. And I told Raul, we need to go and have Kay anoint us both. We need to just get on our knees. I have this thing about getting on your knees. Uh, I grew up getting on the knees you know, on the altar. So I told Raul, let's go. So we went. They took her upstairs and Chuck and Kay's office. Did you ever see their office? Oh, my goodness, what an amazing office, huge. And Chuck and Kay's desk were facing each other. 
Ralph said, I could never study with you looking at me. <laughs> Kay would probably say the same thing. So she was just sitting there, and, and we were talking, and then I said, well, Kay, we came because we want you to anoint Ralph and me. We wanted her anointing to fall on us. <laughs> so she, she went like this, and Ralph held that hand, and I held, she held this hand. And she was having a hard time getting words out. And she was, and, and, and Lord, and I was just like, it's okay. She's praying in the spirit. And she just looked at me and went like this with her hand. And she said, I want you to pray for me. Meaning pray for us. I was going to say her prayer to us. And I thought, okay. So I just started praying. And Lord, and I started praying for Raul and for me. And I don't know, but I just know that I was praying in a very spiritual way. I was praying for Raul and for me to be anointed to serve the Lord. And she was just, yes, yes. And when we were done, she had little tears in her eyes, and she said, you prayed exactly what I wanted to pray. And I thought, that was really strange. <laughs> it was an amazing thing. Because in the spirit, she was praying through me for us. It was just something that only God could do. And so I have a lot of really sweet memories, but that's, I've never shared that, and it's, I share it with you. I'm June Hesterly, and do you know how hard it is to be the last one? And everything that I was going to say, I've had to cross off and start thinking in my mind, okay, now what are some of the things that I want to say about it? And the things that I'm going to say are very disjointed because that's how I sat there and thought of them. But I remember, and we've all talked about how wonderful a prayer warrior she was. And she was an anointed prayer warrior. And I want you to know that I, this first 20 years of my Christian life, I spent in a Southern Baptist church who did not talk about the gifts of the Spirit. Those were from the devil. <laughs> and I wanted to know more about these things. And by then, we were going Monday night and Wednesday night and Thursday night and Friday night and Saturday nights to the concerts. But we were still back in our Baptist church on Sunday morning. And I wanted to know about these things. And Kay Madison was having a prayer meeting. And she was living next door to Kay. And I thought, I heard about this prayer meeting. And I'm going to go over to their house and sit and listen to them pray. And maybe they'll speak in tongues and I'll get to hear this. Because I'd been taught it was really bad. <laughs> and I went over there. And everybody prayed up a storm. And I just sat there kind of listening to everybody. And then I thought, oh, dear, I don't speak in tongues, but I'm just going to pray. And I began to pray, and then I said, um, I, I just sat for a while, and I was really quiet, and I had my head bowed, and, I saw, and it was total silence in the room. And I thought, oh, they're so spiritual. They're sitting there in the spirit. And finally, it seemed like at least 30 minutes went by. And I had my head down. I was trying to be as spiritual as they were, and it poked my eyes open like this, and then finally I just lifted up my eyes, and they were all sitting there watching me, <laughs> thinking I was in the spirit, <laughs> being very spiritual. But I remember also in our board meetings, and a lot of the memories that I have are from the experiences that we had in our board meetings, and one day we were all praying, and I always sat next to Kay because she would read my notes. And it would help her to keep on track with what she was supposed to be doing with on the agenda. And we always had an agenda. So she would look to me and, and all that. But we always, always started our meeting with a prayer time. And I remember one time that I began to pray for a, a, a specific person. And, and I was praying up a storm. And she said, wait a minute. And she went like this and slammed me. <laughs> and she said, talking about what is this all about and she hadn't she hadn't gotten this information she was really upset because she was the senior pastor's wife she should know this information and we had it first and she wanted all the details and she was very a very dramatic person she 
she was raised under Amy Simple McPherson, a super Pentecostal woman preacher, and she told us stories about when she was little and she'd get her dolls and line them all up in the row and slay them in the spirit. <laughs> And I was hoping that we would get to see her do that with one of us. But it never did happen. But she corrected us. And when we got corrected, we felt like we were slain in the spirit then. But you know what? She knew what needed to be corrected. And one of the girls talked about her voc vocabulary. She made sure we enunciated our words correctly. She made sure that we used the right word for the right place. Talk about the colors of the tablecloths. We spent one whole day trying to decide how to word the pastor's wife's letter that would go out. So there'd be no misunderstanding in your mind what we meant exactly. And we kept going back and forth and back and forth. But she would correct us. I don't even to this day know for sure if I say thesaurus correctly. <laughs> thesaurus, thesaurus. I don't even use that. I use Google, so. <laughs> but Kay, Pastor Chuck taught me the word. Kay taught me how to put it into practical use as a godly woman, how to be a wife, how to be a mother, and how to be a pastor's wife. And she always, um, I don't know if some of you are aware of this, but when we would go to the pastor's wife's retreat, we would all sit close around her because we were her bodyguard. Now, look at us. But she wanted us close because she would be exhausted after she got through speaking and she wanted to be escorted out because she would be so tired. And people would swamp her and just swarm around her. I mean, some of you probably did that, sorry. <laughs> and, and so we were to get her out as quickly as we could and escort her back to her room that evening. And I remember one night that was kind of my job. I was staying close by to her and Somebody came up and grabbed her. Now you can do that with us, okay? I mean, especially these girls. I'm gonna go in my room, it's nine o'clock. <laughs> but, but we, would, we would try to guard her in those areas and somebody grabbed her arm and, and they were distraught with all the issues that were going on in their church and in their life. And you know what? I looked at her and usually she will turn to somebody else on the board and she'll say, why don't you sit down and play with her? She, pawn us off on somebody else. <laughs> and I'm sorry, am I supposed to not say those things about her? <laughs> I just want to tell you the truth. And, but these were positive things, but she would, because that person that was hurting, she always had an eye for them and an ear for them. And she would turn to us and say, like, go away, you bother me. And she would sit down there and she would spend a half an hour or 45 minutes with that person, listening to them, praying with them, counseling with them, and she'd be crying with them. She had a heart for those who were hurting in her congregation. And all of you, she loved you so much that she kept her eye on each one of you to know when you were hurting or when you were distraught. And so um, she never never had a negative word for her husband. I never in all the years that we sat under her tutelage that, see, I knew that word, <laughs> that she never ever said a negative word about her husband. In fact, she was always lifting him up, always building him up, always being an encouragement to us as well we heard coming from her. And so we wanted to do most of the time the same thing with our husband. But we learned from those things, practical things about how to be godly woman. So she had that sensitivity. Um, she was a perfectionist. That's why she spent so much time on the color <laughs> of the tablecloth. <laughs> and there were many times that we'd have our retreat almost up like two weeks away, and we still didn't have main session speakers. 
and we'd be, I mean, I'm the, I'm a kind of person that likes to have my, all my ducks in a row. I want it all done the year before. <laughs> and she would wait till the last minute and I just could not understand that. But she was waiting for the direction of the Holy Spirit and she was always correct in the person that she chose for that slot. And she, because she was a perfectionist, she always lifted the bar high for us. We were laughing the other day of all the retreats that we've done, and one of them was, um, uh, Behold the Handmaiden of the Lord. And it was a peachy folder that had a little mirror that was glued on, a little tiny lace glued around it, and we all went, oh, that is so cool. <laughs> we have finally arrived. But you know what? She loved it too. Because, it, and it dawned on me a couple of months ago, as she was teaching us, she was learning to do these things her well, herself. She'd never done retreats before. She had never ministered to her, a group of women like she ministered to us in taking us young ones and doing this. But one of the greatest privileges that Sandy, Jean, and I had was that we were invited back to the East Coast pastor's wives, and they would invite Kay to back, come back to the, be the speaker, and they knew that Kay wouldn't come unless she had her bodyguards with her, so that's the only reason we got to go. <laughs> but we always flew on a private jet. So there were four of us on this jet, plus the two pilots, and Kay was always so special. She always had a special place where she always sat and was always facing us three. And in that spot, the owner of the plane, knowing Kay, would always put a two pound box of Godiva chocolates because she loved chocolates. And soon as we got in the air, she would open her box of chocolates and pass around to each one of us where we were allowed one piece. <laughs> And then she would put the lid back on, <laughs> and we would never see those chocolates again the entire trip. We were never sure, and we do not know even to this day if she ate them all, <laughs> or if she packed them in her bags and brought them home to eat, but we were never offered another piece. <laughs> so ladies, guess what? We are going to give you one piece <laughs> of Godiva chocolates. We have ladies all lined up, they have their bowls, and they're going to get all confused about where they're supposed to go. Just bear with them, you'll get your piece of candy. And she is gonna come up and lead us in some worship. And please, we only have one piece for each of you. If you take more than one, you will be nailed to the door. <laughs> Your neighbor is watching you to see that you take one piece. Now, I want to make a couple of announcements before Gia leads us in worship. First of all, you have a quiet time in your program. Please look at those one another's and use your quiet time. That might be tonight when you go to bed, tomorrow morning, whatever you can work it in because it's a Obviously, we have a different schedule this time. So make, make sure that you make time for that quiet time. And then also, you all have your breakfast in your hotel and meet back here at 9 o'clock. We've got a full schedule and come prepared to spend the whole day here because that's what we're going to do. God bless you. Thank you so much. So um, when uh, this whole thing was being planned, um, I was told, you know, that I should play songs, you know, from like throwbacks, from like back in the day. And I had so much fun 